here we will be going to interface so the first option that you see here this is connected to internet gateway i have named it you can of course change the name instead of connected to internet gateway i will say it one and i will go back here the other interface which is my lan i will give it a name called lan and save it and then you can simply apply the changes it will make the changes over here we'll be looking at wan now so in WAN, you can see here that I have provided the IP addresses manually, which we have already seen. We did it from the command line user interface. But now you want to change the IP address, for example, 12.201, you can change and save the changes and apply it. Of course, this is the uh, manually configured. You can go here on top. If you disable it, of course, your internet will stop working. Uh, though you are connected using LAN, but your internet will stop working and you will not get any internet here. So the reason why enable and disable option is there, for example, if you have two internet connections, uh, so you can enable one and disable one. And when there is uh, the need to connect other one, so you can disable or enable. So it's, it's all up to you how you want to configure it. If you lock this, so accidentally you won't be able to and delete this interface. It is a good idea to lock it uh, to avoid uh, accidental removal also. But I will not do it because this is for the tutorial. But of course, when you are using it in production environment, I will highly recommend you to do the lock uh, so that nobody will be able to delete it accidentally or you will also not be able to delete accidentally. On the WAN interface, it is a good idea to block the private networks, block the Bogon networks. Bogon networks are those networks which are not officially allocated any IP addresses. So that will be blocked. We don't want any uh, private IP traffic to come to our network. So this these two has to be enabled. Then of course IPv4 configuration. I have configured it static uh, which is here and of course you can configure it DHCP also and so it will automatically get the IPv4 address, gateway address and so on. Otherwise you can choose it none so there will be nothing configured. So as I have already configured uh, the static IP, the IP address is assigned here 10.11.12.201. Of course, we did it 200, which was earlier than, and the subnet is 24 bit. So CIDR format, we have to follow here. And then the IPv4 gateway, it was automatically created. I will show you that also how you can create the gateway if it doesn't appear here. So having the WAN IP address will not definitely help you to uh, use it without any gateway. Now, the configuration that you see here that this also looks like a, a local IP address because the ISP service provider has provided me the router and I want to use the same router. Of course, that will have a basic uh, firewall and basic uh, port forwarding and all of that. This is a good idea that you keep the service provider's router there, connect the LAN interface with the WAN interface of your OpenSense. You connect the LAN with your switch. I have already explained you how physically I have connected that. So once it is connected, so what is happening here that now OpenSense is on a second layer of the security, which means that not all the traffic, not all the ports are forwarded to OpenSense. You can only forward the ports which are required. If anything goes wrong in your OpenSense, you can still directly connect to the internet. Of course, I will not recommend you to connect to the internet using the ISP service providers gateway. You keep that just to connect with your OpenSense and your OpenSense should remain your firewall, your gateway, your router at your home or at your office. And WAN is fine. We see changes, we apply the changes and our changes will be applied here and that's it. Uh, I can go back to LAN of course. Uh, identifier, we have added LAN here and uh, block private networks. We will not do for LAN. We will not do for the uh, Bogon network within our local network. So of course, uh, from outside the network is not coming. So inside whatever private networks are there, we don't want to block them. And here is the IPv4 configuration type. Of course, we are having a static IP. Reason is because this particular OpenSense is being used as the gateway for other all devices on the network. If you are using this as only firewall uh, where it is not going to be DHCP server, then you can of course take the IP address from DHCP and this becomes your another device on the network. But as this is going to be configured as the gateway, so in LAN address definitely I will highly recommend you to use static IP and you don't need to make any changes here. IPv6 configuration we will not do unless you want to do it at your network. Promiscuous mod is used when you want this LAN interface to read the traffic even which is not intended for this. This will also help to monitor the intrusion on the network. Once we will go to advanced section, so I will show you how we can use it. 
and then is the MTU default is of course 1500 and here is the maximum segment size MSS header size of TCP IP so we won't be doing anything let it be default unless uh, you have the special network configuration that requires that so we'll be going with default now here you can see that this is the IP address of uh, local network here so I use this particular IP address now this is my network the moment I have configured it of course all my devices are getting the IP address on the same range because OpenSense is now DHCP server as well this is of course up to you uh, I could use it for example 192.168.1.1 which is normally provided in this way you could use of course class C IP address or class A IP address or class B IP address. I am using uh, in this particular range uh, 172.16.1.1 and slash 24. A bit of network is enough because I will be getting uh, 254 IP addresses for home network. This is fine. Uh, you could of course go with a uh, larger network also. For example, 16. It will have the 16 bits of the network address and 16 bits of the host address. 32 means that only one IP address. So I have already explained you how the IP addresses can be calculated depending upon how many IP addresses you want to have on your network. Accordingly, you will be doing that. I won't be going more than 255 devices or 254 reusable devices. So I'll be going with 24 bits here and which is fine. Now OpenSense is already connected to WAN and this doesn't need upstream IPv4 gateway. If OpenSense was not itself a gateway, then we would have connected it with some other gateway if the WAN was not there. But this is not going to be connected to any gateway, external gateway. Now, its IP address is 172.16.1.1. Of course, I will not save it. I have already configured it. So I will go back here. You can see in the LAN, uh, this is my configuration. Of course, you can choose any network address depending upon your needs and requirements or depending upon your plan, how you have planned it. So my network address will be now 172.16.1.0. And the first IP address is assigned to OpenSense. Let us continue to next video now.